load up on coffee now, my friends. I'm telling you, <laughs> you load up on it. Um, I just posted a, uh, I don't email very often, probably once a month, if even that, on my email list. Um, you know, it kind of, kind of ebbs and flows. Now that I'm done my book, I'll probably email more. Uh, but uh, if you want to be on my email list, just go to the, the, uh, the description on this, actually it won't be on this video. I'll put the description in the link here and you can just load up on, uh, you just email, uh, sign up for my email list. Um, anyway, so on the my email list I have right now, I just sent an article out. I mean, yeah, well, it was an article from newspapers.com talking about the price increases of coffee from 1975 till 1977, they doubled in value, doubled in cost, all right. Then I talk about Ursats of the Confederacy, the uh, the book by Elizabeth Massey that talked about Ursats' uh, shortages or scarcity, about coffee in the nineteen in the Great Civil the Civil War. Uh, then I talk about coffee in the aftermath of World War II in Europe and during World War II as well. And then of course even in the United States, which we had no troops on the ground here, we had coffee rationing because we had rationing across the board. Anyway, so the point being, what happened in 1975 was a great freeze in Brazil and in Latin America, generally speaking. And that caused coffee shortages. And of course, the consumer is like, we need action. Action by the government to look into this. Thankfully, the uh, prices uh, fell for the next 20 years. They went down, essentially, thankfully. Uh, so there's no government action taken in terms of price controls and whatnot because price controls always and everywhere create scarcity without question. All right, so now there's a another aspect of price controls. It's the uh, it's food, uh, food, fuel. All right, fossil fuels, um, uh, the price is just going through the roof and they're going to continue to do this, man. Um, and what's happening here is we have regulation on top of regulation. They're not regulating coffee, they're regulating uh, fuel. And how is coffee shipped to the United States? <laughs> Do you think we'd grow our own coffee in the U.S. of A? Are you freaking crazy? We get it from Africa and we get it from Latin America, man, and maybe Central America too. How is that? How is it delivered to the good old U.S. of A? On sailboats? No, it's delivered on ships and trucks. Ships and trucks that are run by battery power from solar? No, from fossil fuels. <sighs> when fossil fuels goes up, what happens to the price of your product is going to go up. So the way you deal with future inflation is you buy up and you hoard it and you load up on it now, man. I, I, this is so blindingly obvious to me. Do you think, do you literally think that the government, Sniffy Joe and his band of freaking Marxists, are, are going to... <laughs> Give you reprieve for the price of fossil fuels just because you're feeling a little bit pain at the in the at the pump or a pain in the price of food. Are you crazy? Did you hear what Gina McCarthy just said the other day as some Axios fool who interviewed her, telling uh, social media they need to ban this. This is fascism. She was telling social media they need to ban people challenging uh, the narrative on climate change. This is, this is the head of the EPA. These are little freaking fascists. Can you imagine if Trump said to someone, we need to ban people telling, uh, saying how oil is no good. I know, no one would take for that, but because it's Gina McCarthy, because it's about green energy, it's like, oh yeah, no, no, we should ban this. It's bad, it's killing them. What about, will someone think of the kids? Anyway, so coffee is a staple. You're addicted, I'm addicted. We're all addicted to coffee. They still drank it in the Great uh, War. They still drank it during the Civil War. They still drank it in the Great Depression. How did they drink it in those places where there's shortages? They created it from uh, hickory. They created, or chicory is what it's called. They created it from acorns. They created it from all kinds of things, but they still drank it. In the 70s, there's was a substitution effect. They're drinking tea instead. How's tea delivered over here? Again, where's tea come from? Ay, ay, ay. Because they won the caffeine hits on truckers and stuff. Load up on coffee while you can, man. Go to coffee. I don't care where you get it from. I mean, I, I buy it from Costco. I buy it from Amazon. I buy it from local roasters. But roasters, all they're doing is roasting it. They're not actually growing the coffee bean itself. So buying it from a roaster is fine, but they're importing it too. I love it. I mean, you should buy it from roasters. I got no qualm with that whatsoever. But what I'm saying is it's, the roasters don't grow it. They just ship it in and import it. 
And at the end of the day, when the roasters can't get coffee, all your local roaster chains that you use, are roaster people, they're going to be gone. So what you got to do is you got to make sure you get your own coffee. And you get it in freaking number 10 cans that are uh, vacuum sealed with uh, uh, oxygen absorbers and whatnot. And you can buy it and load up on it. I'd right, love to hear your thoughts. We'll see you.